Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RA Music. What's it's going on? It's like Firecrackers. <laughs> Your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson <laughs> studio deep in the heart of Texas. Small town East Texas where there's stuff happening outside. Apparently. We don't know what's up. But we are here to answer your questions yet again for episode 316. Yeah. Okay. 316 episodes of Angela and I answering questions. So exciting. There you go. All your burning questions you wanted answers to, you're about to get them. So stay tuned. That's right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Ask RNA. Angela and I own a little music lesson studio in a small town, East Texas, where we teach people to play music. All the music, all the time. And sing and <laughs> instruments and all kinds of stuff, things. And we sell stuff sometimes yeah! too. Super exciting. 11 years now of RNA music. Anyways, each week we shoot a little video where we answer your questions, and that's what this video is. If you're new here, please subscribe. I think you'll get a kick out of our content. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, long-time viewers, you guys and gals who are here right now, get your comment fingers ready, thumbs up, all that stuff. Uh, link in the description if you want to get a little RNA Music t-shirt, swaggity swag. It's a D'Addario shirt. Yep. We don't have D'Addario shirts, but uh, you can get some RNA Music shirts. Get you that if you want to. All right, and get ready to uh, be entertained thoroughly. Hopefully. Or marginally entertain something <gasps> as we answer y'all's questiones right here, right now. Let's get to it. First question. Mm -hmm. Cam DeMan. Hi, Cam DeMan, who just got a PRS <clears throat> and a Les Paul. Like, he's on a, he's on a guitar spree. Yeah. Because we see it on Instagrams. This is, hey, RNA, hope all is well with my favorite mom and pop shop, Deep in Texas. My question for y'all is this. As you may have seen, my family and I have joined a new church. My awesome. wife has strongly encouraged me to maybe consider joining the worship team. Mm. Well, I emailed them a few days ago and I got a response. Mm. How do you prepare for such an undertaking? How do you know when you're ready to join a worship team? Mm. Hashtag Duke's Mayo. Yeah. Great question, Cam Demand. Well, you came to the right place. Yeah. Because Angela and I both know some stuff yeah. about church music and worship teams mm -hmm. and various iterations of that kind of thing. So, okay. Do you have any advice, Mrs. Angela? Um, go in it not expecting a lot of um, high quality um, musicians. <laughs> If you it's weekend warriors. Yes, if you go in expecting um, just on the point, every single person's has their crap together. You know, they're just like studio musicians. You're going to be disappointed. There's going to be days where you know the vocalists are talking too much. There's going to be days where the drummer's playing too loud. There's going to be days where the sound is just completely horrible. All those technical things, I think, ruin the spirit of worship teams. But if you go in there just understanding that these are people with different lives, with all these different jobs and responsibilities and stresses and highs and lows, and you just kind of love them through it, and you come with your A game, maybe not a, an epic A game, but just an A game, <clears throat> then you're gonna enjoy yourself. You can look past all the frustrations, but if you try to make it too much as a performance, or as a studio experience or a gig, then you're going to be <clears throat> let down. Most of the time, people um, who do treat it that way get burned out really fast because you realize that sister so-and-so can only play a certain amount of chords or brother so-and-so likes to play only this band, um, you know. So you have to go in understanding that there are gonna be things that are gonna rub you the wrong way and if you're ready for that emotionally spiritually mentally then you can kind of look past it and love people through it it's just like having kids you know there are going to be days where they're going to go <clears throat> completely ignore you and treat you like you had nothing to do with their existence um, and then there are going to be days where they think you hung the moon that's basically like a worship team 
So um, <laughs> there, it's just gonna be that way. So if you go in there expecting that, um, and also the technical side of it, I think being prepared to play all versions of all things or not exactly how it's played on the radio or on the worship team, those, those things that you have to just keep in mind. There's a lot of keep in mind this and keep in mind that, um, that will help out a lot. I wish people would told, would have told me that because I come in most situations with a high expectancy for everybody. And I expect a lot of times people to approach everything that I'm involved in at the level that I put myself into those projects. And I've learned over the years that I can't do that. You can't um, hold people to I, your standard. No, I can never hold people to people to my standard. Um, I keep my standard high, but I don't put other people there. I meet people where they're at and love them through wherever they are. So that's that's what I would say. Yeah, excellent advice. Mm -hmm. uh, we have both played in churches for many years. We've actually been on staff as worship directors and mm -hmm. leaders at church, various churches. Yeah. Currently yeah. directing a worship team at a church and all that. Um, and I will say this, it kind of, there's a lot of depend, depends on, mm -hmm. right? Depends on the size of your church. Now, we, yes, we went too. to a church in Tulsa that was huge, 15,000 people. Right. The music director had won Grammys Dub and Dove Awards. awards. <laughs> the, the worship leader, the singer, was award-winning, like phenomenal. Yeah. Those of you who don't know what a Dove Award is, it is the Christian like, music industry's equivalent of a Grammy. Yeah. Yeah, CMAs, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. it's It was high level. And everybody yes. there was super high level. But it was a church mm -hmm. of 15,000 people. Yes. Massive budget. Yeah. And so, Production yeah. Company, it was a different like, level of mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I auditioned for that. Team, mm -hmm. I didn't expect to get it because I was like, I didn't really, I couldn't really do it anyways because I my work schedule. But I was like, I'm gonna go do it, and I auditioned, and it was fun. Yeah, and I enjoyed it. Now they were very professional and very prepared and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. That's not most churches. No, most churches are usually smaller and like trying to find musicians. A lot of churches, smaller ones, they're like, does anybody play? Right. <laughs> they're like, they're trying to find mm -hmm. musicians who will even just be able to play. So <laughs> it kind of depends, you know, on the size of it. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the time, the smaller ones are like, we just need somebody to play, yeah. <laughs> you know. So that kind of depends, you know. As Angela said, do the best you can do. If they give you material ahead of time to learn, do your best to learn it, the best of your ability. But the number one thing, and the number one thing I look for in adding musicians to the teams is like, just have a good attitude, right? right. I'd rather have somebody who's sort of an average musician skill level mm -hmm. but they are uh on time mm -hmm. they're respectful they take direction easily they're right. open and flexible if i say hey uh can you play less chunky there and more open thingy there they're like oh, cool whatever you need me to do right. versus like well, this is how it goes i'm playing it how i'm like i'm asking you to play it this way you know you know what i mean so right. instead of like arguing about like but just be flexible and open if the director or the leader asks you hey can you play Chordy stuff here instead of power chords. Sure. Yeah. So I'd rather have someone who's an average musician, but is open and flexible than someone who's like phenomenal, but has right. a super bad attitude. It's like, forget that guy or girl. Like I'd rather them get to step in. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have less skilled players with great attitudes. For sure. Than highly skilled players that with yeah. terrible attitudes. Oh, because we've had, we've had both. We've, we've experienced all. all of the above, so. All the, all the things we've experienced. Yeah. So the number one thing I would say is, you know, just come in with a good attitude mm -hmm. and uh, be teachable and flexible to what they ask you to do. Yeah, now, obviously, sure. I don't really know where your playing level is, but you know, knowing how to play in various keys is helpful with mm -hmm. or without a capo. If you know your open position cowboy chords and bar chords, you're pretty you're good. good. You know, you're golden. Yeah, yeah, it's <clears throat> yeah, you're good. Mm -hmm. And if you know can know how to use a capo and transpose that way, that's great. But and you can play on beat. Mm -hmm. If you can keep the beat, that's, that's the always, main thing. That's always right? good too. So I think it's definitely you should definitely try out because um, we have people in our team that we play that are not um, the greatest players, but they're dependable and like through playing in a group you will become a better player mm -hmm. like we have a drummer sure. right now who like i want him to play because mm -hmm. in the past he never got very many opportunities because we had a killer drummer who's great 
and he didn't get to play a lot and then now he's playing a lot more and I want him to play more because the more he plays in practice and in Sundays mm -hmm. he gets better at playing with the group and now he's, he's significantly better than he was a year ago right so sure. you will grow as a musician playing in a group and most good leaders realize people come in wherever they come in but they hopefully will grow so yeah. definitely give it a shot Cam and man you'll it'll be a great musical experience for you and if you just have a good attitude that's the number one that helps and that goes with like any band if you go to audition for a band somewhere mm -hmm. a secular band yes. they want somebody who's dependable mm -hmm. doesn't show up drunk and can play the stuff and has a good attitude that's what they want mm -hmm. that's the people who get to play in bands yes continually all right thank you for the question cam the man appreciate it we're gonna to try to be concise because it's been a long 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 day for us already and we have long days tomorrow and all that good stuff so thank you for the questions we're gonna to get to them as quick as we can today thank you cam the man terry stark's next question yeah. hashtag dukes mayo sweaty eyes i haven't heard y'all mention summer nam you just said you're busy 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 so i guess ryan you're not going to go but what do you hear this summer now that we are able to move around a little more in the music industry hashtag ktma thanks Right, Summer Nam just happened in Nashville. Mm -hmm. We did not go. <laughs> yeah. I think our first Nam we ever went to actually was a Summer Nam in mm -hmm. Nashville many years ago, ten years ago probably. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, I like the Summer Nam. It's way less intense than Winter Nam. Mm -hmm. It's more relaxed in a way. Um, I haven't paid too close attention to it. I have some friends who are in, you know industry people who went, and one it was her first Nam, and she's talking with companies and getting endorsement deals and she's all very excited about it. And it's her very first time going. I'm like, oh yes, I remember my first name. It was all starry eyed and excited. And then by the fourth or fifth one, you're like, oh, this is work. Mm -hmm. My feet hurt. Mm -hmm. But um, I haven't really seen anything uh, from the companies like, hey, we're at Summer Nam. And as far as products go, I haven't seen anything that I haven't already seen or heard just from regular social media posts. Um, no, we did not go. I, we are super busy. I mean, mm -hmm. between our families taking care of, of course, our kids, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, our parents, mm -hmm. you know, and then running our business and running everything else we do. Yeah, we're pretty busy. Our yeah. plates are pretty full. Um, so we didn't make it this time. I would look. I would love to come back to a summer nam, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't. Who knows what the world well who knows what's going to happen who knows if we'll ever go back to another winter one or not i mean i would like to go again but it's kind of like once you've been to it twice you've kind of seen everything there is to see right Honestly. i've never been to a winter man so. she has not been the winter so we need to go to another winter <laughs> just for angela mm -hmm. so we may we may do one more winter nam but honestly i've been to several and it's kind of like it's kind of like going into the same guitar center over and over and you're like yeah i've seen these strats and tellies and les pauls it's it's kind of the same thing mm -hmm. every time. But you only can say that if you've been a bunch. And if anyone's never been, they're like, oh my God, I want to go. Oh, so me. You know, and it is it is super exciting. I mean, it, I, want, I don't want to say it's not. Mm -hmm. The first one or two are like, yeah, it's great. Oh my God, there's that guy. And sometimes you meet people. And, mm -hmm. But after like the third or fourth, it's like, ah, business. It's just business. Thank you for the question, Terry. Next question. Mm -hmm. Just fun guitar, Captain Reliable, hashtag KTMA, hashtag Duke's Mayo, hashtag Sweaty Eyes. I love mayo on chips. You call them fries. Mm -hmm. What you call chips, we call crisps. They have crisps. Yes. I knew that. We watch stuff. We watch <laughs> English TikTok videos. Yes. There's a girl in England who eats American food and makes TikTok videos about it. Yep. But I, I mean, we watch. We, We've we seen Downton Abbey. To, that before her, my lord. <laughs> like the hard experience with a British person as a right. TikToker. I didn't right. know. I knew that I knew that they were called that. Yeah. I have not really tried mayo on my French fries though. Yeah, I have. And you like it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I have French yeah, fries like... in my mouth while I'm eating my burger with mayo on it, so right. I'm sure it's mixed yeah. together. Mm -hmm. New question, just from guitar, who has all the pet questions. Uh, do your pets like eating any specific treats you give them? <laughs> this morning. Yeah. This morning. They were begging. Yes, they the begged. Little, the little foo-foo dogs. They they begged a lot this morning. Um, so, they, no, they like anything we give them. Any Everything. Um, cat poop. <laughs> They're big fans we of cat poop. We do not give them cat poop. They sneak and go get the cat poop. We do not feed our dogs cat poop. Don't not on purpose. Like 
Not on purpose. That's what I'm saying. They sneak it, but it's like, what do you? Oh, what do we you feed give them? them? Chips. Um, I mean, crisps. Yes. They like crisps. Yes, they do like crisps. <laughs> they like literally anything you have in your hand. Like today, anything I was edible. eating a popsicle. I was writing out checks, and I was like eating a popsicle, and they were like the three dogs were sitting by my feet. Of course, I leaned over, and I had like this about that much left. And Schnauzer, Maltese, and Chihuahua. Uh, yes, and the fruit fruit dogs. The Maltese, I gave her some first, and she didn't care for it, so. Um, our schnauzer Roxy she ate the rest of the popsicle until it dropped on the floor out of the wrapper and then Pepper came our chihuahua and ate the rest of it finalized it off the ground so Pepper eats they like everything. popsicles they like bacon bits bacon anything made of meat yeah bacon grease grease um, eggs yeah they love eggs egg yolks I used to when I was making French toast, not French, I make French toast every morning. When I was making scrambled eggs every morning, I would egg whites and eggs. I'd always get the yolks out mm -hmm. of the whites and then I would throw the yolks into their dog food bowl. <sighs> they love they that. They like that a lot. It was nectar of the gods. They're a big fan of the egg yolks, yes. for sure. So, yeah, they like stuff like that. Little potatoes, not a whole lot of stuff, really. They don't, we try not to eat, give we them stuff from the table, table yeah, scraps. Yeah. Too much. But, that's all they want then. Yes, especially the little ones. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing specific, just general stuff. Anything and everything that falls on the floor. Everything but chocolate. When the nieces and nephews, the little kids under the age of 10 are at the house. Gummy bears. They really love them being there because once they get released, they follow like a trail of where they've been. Because there's, the there's a crumb trail of crisps and candy. There's always there's always crumbs when the nieces and nephews are at the house. So Yes, many, many crumbs. Yep. Crumb snatchers. Thank you, Jess Fun Guitar. Mm -hmm. Our dogs are not going hungry, I can tell you. That. No, they're pretty chubby. <laughs> and the big dogs, we have two giant dogs. They like meat products. Yes. Mm -hmm. Frozen, like chicken patties. fried steak. Yeah, they like the patties that we get. Chicken. Yeah. So. Animals. <laughs> Smaller dogs sometimes. Uh, next question. Frankie Chan from Australia. Mm -hmm. Craggy says, question, what was that light colored semi hollow that you had on the wall this episode? Mm. Also walking dead 1369, hashtag Duke's Mayo, hashtag sweaty eyes. I'm sure there are others out there wondering, but what was that guitar behind Angela? Arch top style, F hole, single humbucker acoustic bridge. Mm -hmm. Can you grab that, my lovely assistant? Turn it. Turn it, girl. Why? Uh, why? Ah! <laughs> ah, this bad boy. I was uh, I was pretty sure you guys yeah. were going to spot this. This is a um, Michael Kelly. Mm -hmm. May, if you are familiar with Michael Kelly guitars, the Bitter Bass Man has a Michael Kelly five string acoustic bass in trans black with a dragonfly fretboard on it from like. 15 years ago. Nice. So Michael Kelly's been around for a while. It is the Michael Kelly Hybrid. You're indeed correct. There is a little toggle switch because it does have a piezo pickup. People get fired up and say it wrong. Piezo. Piezo. Okay. Chocolate piezo. Anyways, piezo. moving on. Anyways, it's got a piezo bridge. We, don't have all day. we got a toggle switch. It's got, it does have one humbucker. It has a master volume for the magnetic humbucker. Has a master volume for the piezo bridge, and uh, yeah, my good friend Ken, who is the music director at a fairly large church here in town, uh, he just got a new PRS SE hollow body piezo bridge. Amazing guitar he let me play, and so it's re this was his. He's replacing this with the PRS, so now he wants to sell it. He's trying to get me to buy it because I need a piezo bridge guitar. Dual output thingy. Schechter makes those, uh, and so does PRS, obviously. But anyway, this is Ken's, and uh, he wants to sell it. Uh, I did test it today. It has a single output that you go a stereo cable, which wires out, and so you can have uh, a line going to your acoustic amp or the PA system, like in a church or the venue, and a line going to your electric guitar amp. So it'll do piezo only, a blend, or electric guitar only. It actually is pretty cool guitar. Awesome. So there you go. Yes. I'll probably do a demo on it at some point when I have all the time in the world. 
It's an older Michael Kelly hybrid. The newer ones have two humbuckers, so this one's a couple years old. 400 bucks. 400 bucks. 400 clucks. Four hundred bucks plus tax plus shipping, and it can be your hybrid guitar, guys. So, thank you, Frankie Walking Dead, and that brings us to my new favorite part of the video. Did I break my guitar? I did not. This is my acoustic electric Takamini. Sounds pretty. It's time for. Excuse me. Comment of the day. <laughs> Comment of the day, right? Yes. I had a beard hair in my mouth. Amazing how that happens. It is. Comment of the day, and for a couple of weeks now, we've been singing Comment of the Day on the spot, impromptu music composition. I'm going to play some chordy chords. Angela's going to sing a melody. Yay. And uh, we're going to sing so the comment excited. of the day. We select a comment we find <laughs> interesting or entertaining or funny mm -hmm. and we make a song out of it. And that's what we're going to do right now. I have not even thought of a chord progression. Give me a chord, babe. Pick a chord, any chord. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so we're going to play the numbers game. Key of G. Give me a number between one and six. Don't overthink it. Four. Four, mm -hmm. one more number. Two. Four and two. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know. So, I don't know. in the key of G, four chord is a C, and the two chord is a A minor. I feel like we've done these chords before. I think so too. But just well, so you, you know, pick those chords. I it's random chance. Okay. If you know your keys and your chords, you could really literally draw a number out of a hat and you'll get a decent chord progression. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. It couldn't get any simpler than this. All right. The four chord to the two chord in the key of G. We're not even playing in G. So, comment of the day. Let me play, I'll play the chords a couple times. You mm -hmm. find a melody and then mm -hmm. when you're ready to rock this joint. It's not gonna rock. It's usually indie. Mm -hmm. like yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna folky. We're not, I know. It's been folky this whole time, so. We'll get the electric guitar out one day, but. Comment of the day. We we made it up on the spot. Multi suitor yeah. one. When my wife had flatulence as she was coming out of the bathroom the other night, for some reason I couldn't quit laughing. Here you. Go. I don't know what that's like. Sorry, my songs know. are like constantly the same way. Well, I apologize. It's there. They're writing the lyrics. They write the lyrics. I try to fit them in with whatever. Well, you got to make it work. Con, you know. You do a really good job. Okay, thanks. I'm a big fan. I like it a lot. Oh my god. I like it a lot. <laughs> I teach teach grammar at night. I like it a lot. Still doing it at day. I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you, multi senior one. Mm-hmm. Next question. Mr. Wilson with a P base, hashtag Duke Mayo, hashtag sweaty ass, hashtag of the day, hashtag all mixes lives. All my exes' lives in Texas. I was like, I thought you said all mexes. I know. <laughs> I can't read. Live I don't in Texas. Glasses. Hashtag bitter bass <laughs> man. All my ex Don't sing it. Yep. Like I mentioned last week, up here in the north, Hellman's is real mayo, or I'm not eating it. Question. Does Vola make basses? Dig in the finish on that double black maple board Vola you got over your shoulder. Oh, yeah. That got super tasty. That is a uh, Vola Vasti. Black maple fretboard, maple neck. I actually shot an unboxing video of these two guitars. Uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, last week or whatever when they came in. It's 97% edited unboxing video, little sound sample play test of these two new Volas, which are brand new models, Gen 3 Volas. There are some big differences between this Gen 3 Vola Vasti and this Gen 1 Vasti. Mm -hmm. And we'll make a separate video on that, but stay tuned the next day or two, you're gonna see a Vola unboxing video from me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of work to do those apparently, because yeah. it takes me forever, but yeah. They do make bases. Pretty sure I've seen a base. If I can go find some pictures, I'll try to put a picture up uh, of the Vola bases. They have, I'm pretty sure they have like the uh, the Oz, which is this guy in the, mm -hmm. the Alpine mm -hmm. white or vintage white. I think they have a base that's okay. the Oz shape and they may have one in that one. I can't remember, they do have bases. Oh, okay. they, I have actually played one when I was in California at Vola HQ. I think I did play on a Vola base. So yes, they do have bases. Try to put up some pics. Yeah. They are great. I mean, the Volas are basically high-end Japanese uh, F style guitars. So if you like, if you like Fenders, you should love these with just slightly cooler body lines. I think so. Sweet. They do, Mr. Wilson, with a P bass. You could have, you could be Mr. Wilson with a V bass. Ooh. You could. We can make that happen. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, with a V bass. Yeah. Jeffrey Egan, next question. Is there any unusual food items you like? Maybe it's a colloquial thing or just something you conjured up yourself. Myself, I like peanut butter, bologna, and potato chips sandwiches. Yes, all together. People say it sounds gross, but they haven't tried it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was, <laughs> is it so a scooping vanilla ice cream with potato chips? I've done that. You have done that? Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's like, maybe this is why Ohio is high on the list for obesity. <laughs> okay. Any something weird you like to eat that people um, don't like? I don't think... Somebody was... They were tickled that our... We had fish sticks with mayo last week. It's like, I've never had it. I'm like, you're missing, <laughs> you're missing out, out on life. Because <laughs> it's just like a meat with mayo. I mean, it's I don't fish know. fish and tartar sauce, basically. Yeah, without the tartar. Um, I don't know if I have anything unusual that I like. Nicholas, his sister got our son Nicholas hooked on peanut butter and pickle sandwiches. I have yet to try that because I think that's blasphemy. Um, <laughs> I don't like pickles. Peanut butter. On anything. Ever. Pickles. <laughs> Not crossing the bridge. I just can't. In my mind that that combination just doesn't um, sound pleasing. The palate. Yeah, pickles are not pleasing ever at yeah, all. Oh, you don't have anything. You can't say anything about anything because oh, all you like are just very bland things. So, um, I like no, not really. I like everything spicy. I add hot sauce on, on almost everything. I add jalapenos on almost everything if I have them, which I found a jar at the back of the fridge, which I'm really excited about the other day. They're probably well seasoned by now. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, soaking in there. So own yeah, juices. I'm not a weird eater. I stay pretty true to what everybody else kind of likes other than adding some red pepper flakes to, I mean, I guess I am pretty boring when it comes to stuff like that, but. Um, what about me? Why do I eat that's weird? Because I know you know. <laughs> not weird to me. But it's not weird to him. Um, I think it's weird that he likes, like, he'll cut slices of cheddar cheese and eat it on top of a Pringle and drink milk with it. That's his favorite, like, snack. The old me. 
It's sour like, cream Pringles. Yes, sour cream and onion Pringles. Sour cream and onion Pringles. A cheddar cheese slice. Little block of cheddar cheese. Like from the block it. of cheese, not like American cheese in this. Rest. Cheddar cheese. Like cheddar cheese, and then a big glass of cold milk. That was his like. And watched him one day. I was like, "What are you? What do you do? What? What are you doing?" Yeah, that was just. You never had bleh. cheese with your chips. Not a it's nachos. Pringle. It's my camera stopped. Pringles. No nachos. No. Is basically, what they are. No. Without no, the meat. No, it's not. No, it's not. What about my peanut butter stuff? Um. Yeah, he likes to eat like, or he did. He hasn't. You haven't in a while. How do you know? <laughs> peanut butter and syrup in a bowl. He'll just mix it in a bowl and just eat it like it's cereal. And he does he does that. Peanut butter um, and honey stirred up together. Like not on bread. No, just <laughs> in a bowl. Just, like it's like it's batter. Like, like it's cookie batter. Like it's oatmeal. Like But it's peanut butter like and honey. Batter. I can't. That's too or much. peanut butter too and peanut. Well that's why I used to be super fat. <laughs> and My when we were first dating, our very first date ever. Um, he wanted to take me to Chili's, uh -oh. but we went to KFC instead. Because? No, it's okay. Okay. They, we've already told him why the because is. There might be new people watching. Yes. We were going to go to Chili's, but there was too long of a wait. It was like an hour and a half wait. We were going to miss, we're gonna our, miss movie. our movie. So we went to KFC, which because I'm fine. Because I'm, I'm fine fancy. I don't take girls to KFC for dates. We go, yes. we go to Chili's. I mean, uh, 22 years later, I think we're fine. So, you, you're fine. <laughs> so we right. went to KFC, and he orders the chicken tenders, the same meal he's always ordered at KFC, never varying off. Why would you change? Um, and he got mashed potatoes, no gravy, which I think is weird because I love their brown gravy. I can drink their brown gravy. I don't like gravy. So, yeah, he he doesn't like gravy, which is weird to me. But it's liquid bread. Yes, which is I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, Sorry. he gets just a plain mashed potatoes and then he got this packet of honey and he opens it up and he scooped a potato and he poured some honey on the on the spoon and ate it and i was just like what just happened what are you you're I, like i think i'm in love no i was just like i think i made a mistake <laughs> i was like what this weirdo i was like he was like what you've never had this before and i was like no because i'm not <laughs> Psycho. Bizarre. I'm not exactly. I'm not a serial killer. Um, so oh, I could kill me some cereal. I could murder me some cereal. Some cocoa puffs. Um, so he's like, no, try it, try it. I was like, oh, okay, fine. And so he poured some on some mashed potatoes, and he gave me some, and it actually is pretty good. Yeah. I don't so eat grass. I, I don't to, eat, I don't that eat garbage. That might be the one thing that I agree with that I think that is the one thing I will eat that he eats that I think is weird. I is, don't actually normally, I don't do that very often. No, and then we have probably have only done like a handful of times since, yeah. honestly. I always forget about it. That was a thing in public school. Or dip in our chicken nuggets in honey. Like asking Ooh. honey from McDonald's if we you want barbecue nuggets. sauce with them chicken nuggets. I'm like, no, I'm like, girl. I want some honey, girl. What's I up? I want some honey. Why would you get spicy when <laughs> you get I want some honey, girl. I like a sweet. <laughs> yes. I got a sweet so, too. That might be the one thing I would say. Yeah. Putting honey on like, yeah. everything. Have you had honey? Yes. I mean. I mean, it's like chicken and waffles. You add like a drizzle of see, that's, honey on chicken and I don't want waffles. chicken on my waffles. I want syrup on my waffles. <laughs> I want syrup on my waffles. And I don't want yeah. syrup on my chicken. There you go. Whatever. It's all good. Thank you, Jeffrey. Great question. What's something you guys or gals eat that some other people think is weird, but you know mm -hmm. is amazing? Like honey on mashed taters. Precious. Mm -hmm. Adam Lynch, next question. I hit the big 5-0 next month. I still can't seem to find the time to completely eat healthy. Mm. All the extra work, everything in moderation. What has been the hardest thing for you guys to give up in your quest to live a more healthy lifestyle? I'm a sucker for a good burger and fries. Yeah, that's a good segue. Oh, it really was. Thank you, Adam. All the stuff that we just said. Big 5-0 <laughs> next month. Real question. Real talk. Mm -hmm. What birthday guitar are you getting? Because when you turn the 5 0, That's you special. get a guitar. That's special. A real guitar. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want to see an unboxing video, Adam. Back to the back to the front. What's oh. been the hardest thing to give up? Um, Nothing. <laughs> I haven't given up anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, I mean, honestly, in moderation. If I feel like getting a candy bar, I'm getting a candy bar. Because I'm not going to deprive myself of that. Because I've been there. 
And then I've gone gangbusters on a giant bag of candy, like we have in there. Yeah, you bought There's a bag of chocolate in there right um, now, <laughs> tempting me. So I can grab just like two or three pieces of candy and I'm good because that craving, that sensation of eating candy is over. But no, I haven't given up anything. I've switched a few things like certain certain um, like tortillas, which I love tortillas. Um, we've done the low carb tortillas or like ice cream. We've done like frozen yogurt, the frozen instead, yogurt of ice cream. instead of it. Um, so there's things that we've switched. So we haven't really get, had to give up anything. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the trick really is because, I mean, I've tried keto, I've tried, you know, Atkins, I've tried, I thought about, we try this potato hey. diet, just eat potatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much everything under the sun that can be done. Everything. And everything works. Here's the thing. Keto works. Mm-hmm. Uh, fasted cardio works. Atkins works. Everything, everything works, but not everything can you do for the rest of your life. Right. Some, some things are not practical to do for like ever. the rest of your life ever. So the thing that's that's really worked for me is just calories. Ca calories in, calories out. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, that's actually the real and story. Yeah. And moving right now, I have substituted a lot of stuff. Like I've I've cut out all like real sugar. Like I don't drink we should real do, like, sodas. A whole separate video about ah, that. We should probably should. There's a lot to cover in that. But yeah, there is. What it really comes down to is calories in, calories out. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, for like losing body fat. Mm -hmm. Right now, some things are more healthy than a, you'd be better off eating a bunch of spinach and vegetables and fruit and vegetables than right. garbage food. But at the end of the day, you can you could eat garbage food in a calorie deficit and lose weight, and losing that weight would have a positive impact on your life. Maybe not as good as if it was just fruits and veggies in a calorie deficit, but definitely not because you're not going to get any nutrients. You yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, muscle you, mass, you definitely do need some, some, some micro, the micronutrients. Your hair might start falling need. out, but you're thinner. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's important is you look better. Oh my gosh. Know. So no, really it's been like substitute, like instead of real sodas, I drink diet sodas. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of the, uh, instead of the, um, Starbucks frappes that I love and the McDonald's frappes. I'm like, oh my god, I love it. And the seven make them at home. I make my the, own and count the calories. sugar free. And yeah. you know, so really it's just been the trick. I think that's worked finally that I've been able to mm -hmm. for over or a year, about a year now, like mm -hmm. lose weight and keep it off, has yeah. been finding lower calorie alternatives of the things I already want. Yeah. Pizza but lower calorie. Yep. Oh. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you can talk forever on I could. that. Because it's been the biggest impact, the biggest thing that's happened to me in this past year is mm -hmm. losing 45 pounds mm -hmm. and being able to kind of keep it off. Keep it off. That's been so. And exercise. Mm -hmm. Actually, exercising consistently is like every yeah. single day. I haven't missed a day. And keeping that deficit going, not just, you know, building muscle and all that stuff so you can help burn the fat. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Adam. Maybe another follow up video. If people are interested in that, may. I think you should just do it. Just Not do a follow separate. the video. Just do it. Just do a video about it. It's about RNA music. So okay. There you go. I will do that. That'd be great. That'd be a fun video. Mm -hmm. It'll be like seven hours long. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Next question Midnight Wind. <laughs> so, Duke's Mayo, hashtag sweaty eyes. I bet that Duke's Mayo is really good. And now I have to get my fish out of the oven. LOL. Y'all are influencing me. Okay, here's my question since you asked Do you prefer hot and spicy food? Or more medium, or do you like more bland and straightforward? See, we covered this, this all again. Just, this all comes together. Oh my gosh, all the food stuff today, <clears throat> and the next one. And the next one, freaking Daktar. Um, I prefer extremely hot. You like it spicy. Extremely spicy. The more hot, the better. Like today, we got we just chicken went tenders. To chicken Express for chicken tenders. And I asked for the spicy tenders, and I was denied the spicy tenders. Yeah, they were normal. And they tendies. didn't even tell me that they denied me the spicy tenders. You got normie tendies. <sighs> yes, I got normal tenders, which was really upsetting. <laughs> I actually have been enjoying the Burger King spicy chicken sandwich. It's, it's pretty spicy. actually really good. We have a brand new Burger King in Canton, Texas. Yeah, and that's the only way to eat Burger Kings is if it's a brand new establishment yeah, you and don't it's wanna... clean. <laughs> they still, I mean, the buildings, they could be the building's new. Mm -hmm. The employees are not nuts. so no, uh, not, so, <clears throat> not, not so the highest caliber fast food employees. <laughs> yeah, not so great. 
Um, but yes, I would rather have spicy anything. Like I said before, I will put red pepper flakes on everything. Almost everything other than my sweet stuff. Yep. So, yeah. I'm more a medium because I do like some Tex-Mex. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like when I was a kid, I didn't want, like, I would barely dip my chip in the salsa. Not As I've gotten like, older, yeah. I, I'll like, eat a whole thing. When up. we first started dating, I remember watching you. I was a kid. Chip and I, I was, was like, seven when we dated. I was like, what is he doing? Because I use my chip as a spoon. You're scooping it. Because I want to eat the salsa. I don't flavor my chip. The chip isn't the isn't the goal. Eating the salsa is the goal. You eventually, if you eat the enough chips, if you salsa, eat enough chips, dip. The pico de gallo. Mm. So I like some, not to the level Angela enjoys the spiciness. I get it from my dad. You do. It's your Alabama side. <laughs> So definitely medium when I'm feeling extra uh, adventurous, but most of the time bland. Mm -hmm. Very bland and sweet. The boys like spicy too. Yeah, they do. They get it from their mom. Yeah. I'm like, but have you tried hot sauce on it? They're like, oh, I haven't tried hot sauce on it. Like, we'll put hot sauce <laughs> and then she's on like, like our fancy Have you outfit. tried the nuclear Godzilla fire sauce? <laughs> it's like, like even when the boys go to like Taco burning? Bell. They'll get the, what is it, the lava or the, whatever, the, <laughs> yeah, the nuclear Diablo yeah. <laughs> sauce on the sauce, sauce Sous. on it, sauce. Sauce. <laughs> we compliment each other. Mm -hmm. We do that, so. Yeah. She's spicy, um, white and bland. <laughs> brown and spicy. Mayo. You're brown and spicy. <laughs> I'm very mayo on a cracker. Mm -hmm. Pretty in the snowstorm. Miracle Whip on a cracker. That's yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Midnight Wind. Great question. What do you guys like? Do you guys and gals like spicy, bland, or sweet? Mm -hmm. You are a sweet dude. Right. Savory. Ne savory. Next question, Dactar. A gave us the recipe mm -hmm. for Duke's mayo. Uh, no. Oh, it's four. Alabama white BBQ mm -hmm. sauce. One and a half cups it's Duke mayo. Gibson's. One third cup cider vinegar. Fourth cup lemon juice. Two tablespoons of sugar. Two tablespoons freshly ground pepper. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, two tablespoons white wine Worcestershire sauce. One tablespoon of salt. I heard this is the B, the BB Gibson recipe. Okay, a recipe for Bob Gibson's. Huh? How yeah. about that? Mm -hmm. You've got it now. I like some heat in there as well. Have you ever eaten Alabama BBQ? Sweaty eyes, sweaty Texas eyes. Angela could see this post. Have you ever tried Alabama barbecue? Oh yeah. Come on, son. Yeah, man. Come on, son. <laughs> yes. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. Get out of here with that boy. Right. Her yeah. family is from Alabama. <laughs> Her dad yeah. is. We lived off Alabama. of Alabama barbecue, like a lot as kids. Like our whole summers, like almost every summer throughout my whole entire childhood was spent in Alabama. And with black people. With, with black people. <laughs> Not with real black people. <laughs> real black people. Um. So yeah, and we always had Bob Gibson's. It was that was a staple. It's a must. Um, when my dad retired, we lived in Texas. When my dad retired and moved to Alabama for about seven years, they lived there. He until, returned to he Alabama returned, for a little while. The son returns, um, and every Christmas was our tradition of getting um, barbecue. That was when we go over there. That's what we would have for Christmas. Um, yeah. And I've had it because we've traveled when her parents moved back to Alabama. Mm -hmm. We traveled to visit, so I've had it. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. It's not bad. I mean, barbecue is barbecue. It's like, how do you mess up barbecue? Yeah. I think Alabama barbecue, other than their white sauce and they have more of a vinaigrette base of taste, is very similar to Texas barbecue. Texas barbecue, um, their, our sauce is more like sticky sweet. It's more like a thicker sweet. It's not vinaigrette at all. It's more um, molasses, brown sugar. Um, base, ketchup base. You're talking so, about English girl. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so we had, we've had, I mean, it's the cooking process is practically the, practically, I'm not going to say exactly the I same. Mean, Texas is better. <laughs> but, you know, Texas but, um, can be a 105 but if and you're Alabama gonna, can if, be a 100. You know, and it was so funny is that I don't think I've ever had family made barbecue. Oh, like at maybe, somebody's house. Maybe like once or twice. I vaguely remember that, but no. It's always been Bob Gibson's. Yeah. I got a text. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. And final question. Here we go. Fat Philosopher returns with a question. He somehow YouTube wasn't showing him our videos for a while. So mm. he was like, how come they're not showing me this stuff? I'm like, I don't know, Fat Philosopher. You have to I don't know. Ping us and just click the bell and us. say all notifications, not some notifications on the bell. I want all the RNA notifications. So. <laughs> there you go. He says, uh, Fat Philosopher, of course, lives in Japan. The Japan. The yes. Japan, which is mm -hmm. super amazing. He says, Olympics are starting here in Japan this next week. What do you think is the least interesting Olympic sport? I wonder if you mean, does it have to be summer, least interesting summer <laughs> Olympic sport or least interesting winter, Olympic sport? Winter Olympics? Of all I time. I think all Winter Olympics is the least. Snowboarding is super rad. I like watching them do those amazing jump, like long ski jumps. I watched jumps. one, ep one. Oh well, it's cool. Click. I was like, that dude is gonna die. I mean, he's flying <laughs> without a parachute. Deluge. Now that bobsledding, I think bob is real sledding. boring. <laughs> It's I mean, just, there's a Disney just, movie about it, but you know, I think um, Bob said Well, you know, um, uh, what is it? The when they're they're shuffling the ball, curling, curling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's pretty boring. <laughs> I can't do curling. That. I can't do that one. Yeah. Um, what's a what's a winter? I mean, summer one. That's the least. Running in circles. <laughs> no, I actually like, like the, the track, track and field. I do. It, yeah, because some of them people, I mean, they a, human, a human that can run that fast is like that it's is insane. Fly. I love, um, I don't necessarily like the infield events like shot, um, put. shot put and um, javelin throwing. Yeah. I do like the running long jump, the standing long jump, because I did those in high school um, and the hurdles and stuff like that. I, I ran those. And so I, since I've done them and I know what it takes to do them, not at that level, but Girl, just, you practically get an this, <laughs> Yeah, right. You're an Olympian this, in my book. I was like, I'm like, where is that? Oh, my side. Uh, I'll be pooping myself <laughs> running around that track now. Um, but um, those are interesting to me. But, yeah, I, I would think, I don't know. I haven't really watched the Olympics that I used to lately. like diving, but now diving is not that interesting to me. Um, yeah. I like the swimming events. Sometimes it's fun watching someone who's so amazing, like Michael Phelps. Or it just like, feels like now the Olympics are just all about the gymnast, <laughs> and that's everybody else just happens to be there. Yeah, karate. They don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the archery. I like those. I've tried watching the archery before because like, archery is pretty cool because mm -hmm. like you could kill people. Yeah, that's it's impressive. That's like you're, you know, if you're. I mean, that takes some def definitely. If there's skill. an apocalypse. You want those people on your team. Who do you want on your team? The Olympic level Cat archer is. or the gymnast? <laughs> or the curling champion? Like, no, give me the freaking yeah. archers and we're gonna like, we're gonna be fine. It's like, what is Simone Biles gonna bring to the table? Simone Biles, what if, if the Girl, what you gonna do? Lives, she'd be like, I'm gonna flip up on top of that house, I'm gonna leave y'all to get eaten. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, Yeah, I want yeah. the archers on my team. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. And maybe you know, the javelin throwers. Yeah, you know. well, you know, they're not going for targets, they're just going for distance. And I like the running high, the high jump. I do like that, because to be able to lift yourself up with the catapult and, and come up straight up and then flip and then land, oh, it's just cool. That's pretty impressive. It's impressive. That's a lot of strength. So curling is probably our least favorite. Yeah. Overall, both winter and, because that's a winter Olympics. It is a winter one. Yeah. Curling and shot put. Mm -hmm. Watch me throw this heavy piece of metal. I mean, it's impressive, but it's oh, just it's, like, I don't want to watch it. Right. I can't do it. I mean, I'm going to like lose a shoulder socket if I try that. But. Mm -hmm. They should make shredding guitar an Olympic uh, event. That way Jeff Loomis can win the gold medal every time. I think crocheting should be an Olympic event. If it's timed, that would be crazy. Mm -hmm. You could win that. You have this blanket to make in 20 minutes. Go. <laughs> That's the final question. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for uh, you saved us. Last week we had two questions and we had to drag it out. Now we got plenty. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, yeah, uh, we have like 45 minutes. Of yeah, no, nah, it's crap. We were, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Son of a gun. It's 40 minutes. Dang mm -hmm. it. Okay. 
Thank you for the questions. If you have a question for next week, please leave it down below. And if you made it all the way through this 40 minute video, secret hashtag of the day is hashtag curling. <laughs> and if you type that below, we'll know you watched this whole stinking video all the way through, which is super cool. And you will achieve legend, Olympic <laughs> legend status. And uh, we appreciate that. We just kind of like to see who actually watches the videos all the way through. It's a little game. Thank you guys for playing it with us. Ask us a question for next week. And until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. And you need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation of Olympians. I'm so proud of you for remembering. What? The tagline. Every now and then I remember things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. All right. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye. bye. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. After a while, crocodile. <laughs> Bum 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 b